just going to be ma uh, mainly focusing on 16 through 18, but I want to make sure that we do 11 through 15 so we can remember where we're at in this. But um, uh, I believe this will be a good help for us and a good truth for us tonight. Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and read these together. I'll read verse 11. Let's do every other verse together all the way to the end of the chapter. Verse 11 says, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. Verse 12 altogether. And, and to, to the Reubenites, and, and to the Gadites, and to half the tribe of Manasseh, spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, the Lord your God hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. Verse 14. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side of Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. Until the Lord hath given your brethren rest, as he hath given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan, toward the sun rising. Now if you remember that, that's that uh, half-tribe of Manasseh, uh, Ephraim, uh, and uh, Reuben. Not Ephraim, not Ephraim. Reuben and Gad. I knew that sounded weird. Uh, but remember, those those two and a half tribes, they wanted the land that's outside of the promised land. And so that's on that, that east side of the Jordan. So that's who they're talking to there. But all right. Uh, now verse 16. Verse 16 all together. And, and they, they answered, answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we, we will, will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. Verse 17 says, According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Then verse 18, all together, let's read this. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death, only by strong and of good, good courage. Amen. Good verses right there. Mainly tonight we're going to be looking at 16 through 18. This is a very good truth that I'm going to preach tonight. And I believe that this is very important. This is something uh, tonight that I, I think greatly could help. If everyone who is in a church took the truth that is preached tonight, you would, you would be a huge asset to the church. Sometimes people in a church can be a liability. <laughs> you know, I, I, I've been in churches before where I, I do know the pastor sometimes wish that that person necessarily wasn't in the, in the church. And they wish... I hope that person can go find another church. <laughs> I, I, I've seen that before because sometimes how attitudes are towards a man of God or towards just the church, and it can affect the spirit uh, of the church. But if you take a message like tonight, the truth like tonight, I mean, we don't want to be a people that hurts the church. Okay. You know, we want to be a, a, a huge asset to the church, and, and, and we want to be a help. And we see here in this passage here, there are men right here who want to be a help and, and they want to work. There's a huge asset to, to, to here to the nation of Israel. And so I think tonight will be a, a good encouragement for all of us. And so, uh, amen. Uh, this is follow the leader part three, part three, but we're looking at that in that encouragement again. Uh, and so let's pray. Dear Lord, please be with us during this time, Lord. Please be with me as I preach your word, Lord, and preach your truth. Lord, please be with us as we hear your word preached, Lord. Help our hearts, our minds to be open to it, Lord. And uh, Lord, we love you in Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated. Uh, the, uh, in the past two weeks,
we have looked at uh, encouragement. We looked at point number one from two weeks ago was how God encourages his leader. And that was verses one through nine. And we looked at how God's leader can get encouragement from, from God's commission. We looked at how he can get encouragement from God's promises. We looked at how God's leader can get encouragement from God's written word. We also looked at how God's leader can get encouragement from God's commandments. And so we looked at that two weeks ago. And then uh, last week, we looked at how the leader then encouraged here in Israel, how the leader encouraged the officers. Uh, but we looked at how really it's, it's the leader encouraging the church right here. You know, speaking of, of the church today, how the leader encourages the church. And we've talked about how the leader will, it will remind them of God's promises. And that's, we looked at how Joshua did that last week. He, he said to the nation of Israel, hey, go tell uh, you officers, go, officers of 50, go, go tell your people, then the officers of 10, tell them. And how uh, Joshua was able to encourage all of the people uh, by reminding them of God's promises. This is what God had done in the past. If God had uh, uh, split, split the waters in Egypt, uh, hey, he can split the waters of the Jordan. He can do that again. And so he encouraged people by reminding them of God's promises. By the way, if you were not here the past two weeks, I do want to encourage you to go and look at those sermons on, on, on YouTube. You can see those and listen to those. I believe those are, will be helpful to you. Uh, but then we also looked at how Joshua, he encouraged the officers. He encouraged the people of Israel by reminding them of what God has told them to do. And uh, God uh, had told Moses, all right, you're gonna stay here in the wilderness for 40 years. But then there was a new leader. There was a new leader that came up, Joshua. And uh, the mission that God had for Moses was different than the mission that God had for Joshua. And so Joshua then is reminding them, hey, this is what God is going to have us to do. And uh, uh, so he, Joshua he encouraged them for, by reminding them God's word. But then also we looked at last week about how God encouraged them by reminding them of the promises they made as well. And uh, really you see a lot of that with don't quit, don't quit at all. And you see that that was a reminder uh, in those verses from last, uh, uh, from those verses that we looked at from last week. But tonight we're gonna look at how uh, the officers encourage the leader. And so there's conversations that are going on here. You see, there was, at the beginning, there was conversations kind of between Moses and Joshua, uh, but then also Joshua and God, and God and Joshua. You see how those, those conversations were happening. And then last week, it was the conversation from Joshua to the officers. But tonight, we're looking at how it's, it's now the officers responding back to Joshua. And that response from the officers to Joshua is a response of encouragement. And so uh, we'll look at how the officers encouraged their leader. This is that third point, the last point of this chapter one that we'll look at. Uh, but I do have four points under this third point. So uh, we're, we're not out of the woods yet. We still got a little bit more to go through. Uh, but look at verse 16. Verse 16, it says, and what? They. they. And what? They. 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 That the pronoun they uh, probably refers to all the officers that Joshua had addressed. Uh, right here, it's kind of, you see Joshua, uh, he's talking to those two and a half tribes. Uh, but uh, just referring to them. But now it says, and they. I don't think this is just the two and a half tribes saying, and they. I think this is all the tribes, all the officers now saying to Joshua, uh, now responding to Joshua. So this is what I think right here, not just the two and a half tribes, but all the officers and nation of Israel in, in one accord and they. I think that's what's happening right here, responding to Joshua. Uh, uh, and so uh, here they, we see that there's going to be encouragement to Joshua, their new leader from they. All the tribes, all the, all the officers uh, speaking on behalf of the nation of Israel to the new leader, uh, Joshua. And so uh, what's the first point of encouragement we see here from the officers to the leader? How do they encourage their leader? The first point, they encouraged him by assuring Joshua 
of their followership. Of their followership. Look at this in verse 16. It says, and they answered, and that they, I, I believe, that, like I said, this is all the officers right here in Israel. It says, and they answered Joshua saying, all that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will what? Go. Go. The verse 17, according as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto who? Me. Thee. Me. What is that? All the officers, they're speaking. I believe on, on, on the whole nation, for the whole nation of Israel, looking back to Joshua and saying, hey, whatever you tell us to do, we will do. Amen. Where you send us to go, we're going to go. Amen. What, what, whatever, it, Joshua, what it is, hey, we're going to follow. They understood that, all right, Moses was the leader. That was the God-appointed leader. They understood that God had appointed a leader. They understood that. And so they understood God had appointed a leader that was Moses, but now Moses has passed. Now the new leader is Joshua. And they're saying, all right, we understand the God appointed position here. Now we're going to follow. We're going to follow. And I believe that that is what they're saying. They, they encourage Joshua by assuring him that they're going to follow, of followership. Now, I don't know if followership is a word, but it sounds good, right? If it's not, it should be. Actually, I don't think it is. Uh, but uh, these officers, uh, you know, they, they didn't have any agendas. Uh, you know, I, I've seen in churches before, we'll, we'll, sometimes there will be a member and they have one agenda. They do not care if the whole church is burning down in flames or whatever it is. They just want their one agenda through. They will kill a church just to get their one agenda through. They, they will... They, and if the, if the pastor does not do their one agenda, they will try their hardest to kick out that pastor. I've seen that. Uh, I, I've seen that happen. And you know what? It is so easy for that one person just to go find another church. Yeah. Just go. There are so many weak pastors out there. Why don't they just go find a church where they can control a pastor? Yeah. Sometimes people don't realize that pastor, that's his life. Yeah. Yeah. Just because you want to get your one agenda through, you're going to ruin a man's life. You're, you're going to make his whole family, his kids, go pick up, pack up, move somewhere else because you want your one agenda through. I think that's wicked. Amen. But you see here with the officers here, man, uh, whatever it is, hey, what you say, where we'll go, we will go and we will do it. We will follow. Uh, there is no we will follow, but. All right. No, it's we will follow. And they, they're going to follow. Uh, they would follow all his commands and, and wherever they would send him. I'll tell you what, churches today could use that type of commitment. Amen. That, that is, it, you know, we, we're a small church, but we have a lot of good people in our church who are like that. Amen. Uh, it, it, it's kind of rare to find that. Yeah. There's a lot of churches that hurt because there's not people in a church that are like that. Uh, who, who, man, who just want to get their agenda through. And that, that could really hurt a church. And you know, it's not even a biblical agenda. It, 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 it's, something, it's something that doesn't even matter. But, but they want to get that thing through. So I'm not even talking about Bible doctrine. I'm just talking about some random sort of thing they just want to get done. You know, maybe want to get a gym built. <laughs> you know, we're, no matter what, we're going to get a gym built. <laughs> I remember one time I was in a, 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 a Faith and I, we were in a church one time and uh, we became members of this church and this church, they had a business meeting. It was the first time ever going to a business meeting after, uh, uh, at this church. And uh, I, we, we had been at this church for six, seven months and, you know, we thought everything was going good. And then you go to this business meeting and there's this couple that raises their hands and the lady stands up. <laughs> And I was thinking, uh oh, it's not even the husband. <laughs> you know? Oh no, this this is this is gonna be interesting. And the lady stands up and starts talking bad about the youth pastor that's right there. And talking bad about them, but then yelling at the pastor about talking bad about them. Uh, because they were wondering why they were financially supporting that person when they could, you know, when the gym needs a roof. It didn't make sense. It was awkward. It was weird. They were trying to 
push some sort of agenda through, which really I didn't think that was the problem of the church. I thought there was other, a lot more problems with the church than that uh, that you could have hammered on that were biblical doctrines before you even got to that point. Yeah. Uh, it, it didn't even make sense to me. Uh, but it's kind of that, that one agenda. It can create awkwardness sometimes. Uh, but, uh, man, they said, hey, we're going to follow. Uh, too many times we can be like the men that are described in, in Luke chapter 9, verse 57 through 62, where uh, there's these men, they, they want to follow Jesus, but, but uh, the one man says, hey, I got to go bury this person before I follow you. No, no, no. No matter what, Jesus looked at them and said, hey, let the bed, let, let the bed, let the dead bury the dead. And uh, hey, just follow. Amen. Right? Yeah. And that's what Jesus says to them. Hey, we should follow. We should have commitment. It is hard to find people who are committed to the church. Amen. People today, man, a lot of them are committed to, to their own ideas. Yeah. And they miss out on a lot of blessings because of it. Uh, but we see here, man, these men, they were uh, committed to follow. I, 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 I read this quote. It says, I find the doing of the will of God leaves me no time for disputing about his plan. Amen. I thought that was a good quote. You know, how do we know God's will? Right here. Amen. Right here we get to see God's will. Now, now you may have a calling from God that is different than mine, but all of us get to see God's will, and it's right there. Amen. And a lot of times, people just want to argue rather than just do. And hey, we need a lot more doers. Amen. I, I definitely believe that the, the Christian life, it's, man, it's a life of action. There's a lot of spectators, and it shouldn't be so. Yeah. It definitely is a life of action, getting involved, doing, uh, getting to work. Uh, you know, they understood here that that Joshua, God had appointed him. So whatever Joshua would say, they knew that it was coming from God, so they did it. Amen. You know, I'm very thankful today in the church that uh, Faith and I, you know, before we go on vacation somewhere and go visit a church, I'm able to, you know, pull up a, a YouTube sermon uh, of a church, and I'm able to know, hey, is that pastor preaching what he's supposed to be preaching? You know, today we're able to know if that's a God-appointed pastor by what he's preaching. Amen. And we're able to verify it by God's word. Hey, when you find someone where a pastor is preaching God's word, preaching it correctly, it's biblical, hey, follow. Amen. That is a right place to be. That is a good place to get your family in, get your kids in, and to follow. And uh, uh, we see that with point number one right there. The second thing we see here as well, how did they encourage the leader? The second thing, look at the rest of verse 17. It says, only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. What are they doing? How can we encourage the leader? By praying for him. Amen. By praying for him. You know, uh, growing up, I've actually... I, I've, I've seen one church split. I, I actively have seen a church split before in, in that church and seen a church split. I, I've seen that once. Uh, and then uh, another time I, I saw a pastor horribly fail. And I've seen how with, with failings like that, how that affects the people. And it greatly affects the people. There, there are a lot of people that I went to high school who don't want to have anything to do with the church anymore because they saw a man of God fail. That, that hurts. Yeah. That hurts a lot of people. Makes people bitter yeah. because of it. Uh, you know, I do believe that when it comes to a pastor in the church, man, Satan's on the attack. Because if you can get the pastor, if you can get the pastor's family... How many people in that church is going to crumble because of it? A lot. A lot of people will crumble. It, it, it affects the, the youth. It, it affects marriages. Man, I, I can think of one pastor. Man, when that pastor failed, it, it was like it was like divorce city. You know, a bunch of marriages started breaking up and divorcing. It didn't make sense. I thought those were good, good marriages. But then they divorced. It, it didn't make sense to me. Hey, we need to pray for pastors. Amen. Pray for the pastor's wife. Pray Amen. for the pastor's kids. Amen. And we see right here, 
Man, these officers, they tell Joshua, only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. They said this to Joshua. I believe this was a prayer that they were praying as well. Amen. And that they were praying that. Man, the best thing we can do for those who lead us is to pray for them daily and ask God to be with them. Joshua, man, he was a trained man. Vast experience. A warrior. A leader. That's who he was. Trained by Moses to be a leader. But that was no guarantee of success. He needs God. He needs people praying for him. And that's what he needed. No Christian worker succeeds to the glory of God apart from prayer. Corey Ten Boom, uh, she one time asked, is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? <laughs> I thought that was a good quote. What's the third point we see here? The third point in C. Let's look at verse 18. It says, Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, in all that thou commandest him, read this with me. Look at this. It says, He shall be put to death. Third point, hey, we need to start putting some people. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. That, that, that's not the third point. That is not the third point. I'm totally joking. Totally joking. But third point right here, how did they encourage him? Man, they assured him that their obedience was a matter of life or death. Amen. Amen. You know, when it comes to the church, this is not some country club. Amen. Th that is not what the church should be. That, you know, it's just a, I get to go and meet people. That's not what the church is. Sure, the fellowship is great, and that's important. But the church is a matter of life or death. The, and, and that's, man, on, on, on a Sunday, Brother Alan, I think Brother Alan, you told me a story on Thursday about Joel Osteen. About, uh, about he had an opportunity to tell the whole world on TV how to get saved. And he failed. Amen. He couldn't do it. He, man, it was... He had a Michael Jordan moment, come in clutch. He missed the open shot right there. Man, hey, the church, the, the mission is to give people the gospel. Amen. To tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. Because it's a matter of life and death. Amen. It's important. How, now, how, how do we know that right, right here, look. Later, there's a man named Achan in Joshua. Achan disobeys. Achan dies. Yeah. Because it's a matter of life and death. Hey, at the church, it's not a country club. It's not, it's not a place where, where, where we're all supposed to come together and sing kumbaya and, and uh, you know, ju just to make each other feel good and, you know, Confetti and balloons, which are great sometimes. <laughs> but that's not what it's about. Hey, the church, you follow God. Amen. And that's what, and, and hey, one day if you go to a church, if, if, if a military moves you, whatever it is that moves you, man, you make sure you go to a church where there's a man of God preaching God's word from the King James Bible and, and is, is doing it God's way. Amen. Because if there's a church out there that's not doing it God's way, how many people are going to hell because of it? Mm -hmm. I believe there's a lot of churches where people sit in the church just going to hell. Because yeah. they don't understand it's a matter of life and death. Achan didn't do it God's way. And you can go look at, I think it's Joshua chapter 7 or, or 9, one of those chapters. Achan doesn't do it the way God told him to do it. Dies. It's a matter of life and death. Amen. And we see, man, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, officers here, they assured Joshua, hey, we're going to do it the right way. We're going to do it God's way. We know that you are God's appointed leader, and so what you say is what God has told you to say, and we're going to do it. 
It's a matter of life or death. We see that here in point number three. What's the last point here? Point number four, end of verse 18. It says, and read this with me. We've seen this so many times throughout just chapter one. The last part after that, uh, uh, after the colon right there, it says, only be strong, be strong and of a good courage. courage. What are they doing right here? The officers, they're reminding him of the word of God. They're reminding him of the word of God. I love having conversations with the people in our church. But what I love more, my favorite conversations with the people in our church, I'm not saying this is the only conversation I want to have with you guys now, but I love it when there's Bible questions, there's Bible conversations. Amen. You know what can frustrate me the most sometimes? And this is, this, this is, just, a, this is just a little pet peeve of mine. But sometimes there'll be people who come, come to church and they want to have conversations uh, about some, this is just a pet peeve, and I'm not trying to pick on anyone, but sometimes they'll just want to have a, con that they'll want to have the same conversation they have here that they've had all week. And I'm wondering, if you're not even wanting to talk to about God here, then you're definitely not wanting to talk God out there. Does that make sense? I, I don't know if that's just, just my thinking, but, but sometimes I wonder, you, you, because I know what people do all week. I, I find out this stuff for some reason, but, but, but I, I, man, if, if Monday through Friday, that is what you do, and then you want to come here and just have that same conversation, and there's nothing Bible, and then, you know, sometimes, I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to pick on anyone, if you, I, I, okay, I have fallen asleep in a service before, okay? I'm going to admit that. There have been times where I have worked, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> there's been days where I've worked a 12-hour shift, and I've come to church on a Wednesday night, and I'm, I'm battling through, okay? So I'm not, I'm not picking on that, those type of moments, so that's, that's not what I'm picking on. I, I understand that, and, and that, 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 that makes sense to me. But there are some people I know who, they don't work at all, then they'll come to church and they're having a hard time staying awake because they were up last night just gaming. Yeah. And so then they sleep during the service, but then after the service, they want to talk about gaming again. Yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. It's a sign of absolutely no spiritual anything. I, I, I'm not trying to pick on... Now, if you've slept before, like I said, I, I, I told you a story about how I've done that before, too. That, that is serious. I've had, I've had those days where... Long day. Uh, I, I was talking to Brother Mike out here in the vestibule area, and, and I, I yawned a little bit because, hey, I had a busy day at work myself. It's, it's busy. I, I get it. Uh, so I'm not talking about that. Uh, but, you know, man, have a spiritual conversation. Amen. And we see here, these, these men right here, they reminded Joshua of God's word. Right, and just in chapter 1 alone, four times we see, be strong and of a good courage. These officers, they're reminding Joshua what, what God had said. Hey, Joshua, be strong and of a good courage. They're quoting the Bible back to him. That's what they're doing. Hey, let's have some Bible conversations. Amen. Let's talk about the Bible. Let's remind each other what the Bible says. It should, it should not just be in the church where the pastor is the only one talking about the Bible. The Bible's not just for the pastor. It's for everyone. Amen. Hey, and if you ever had a church where the pastor is the only one talking about the Bible, you're probably being preached it wrong. Everyone should know it. Amen. All of us. And it should not just be the only one... The only the, the preacher who just knows the Bible, all of us should know it, and all of us should be saying some stories back to each other that's in the Bible. Hey, if we are to conquer the enemy and claim our inheritance in Christ, we must have spiritual strength and spiritual courage. That's what that means. Be strong and of a good courage. Amen. In the ending, I, I went a little bit longer than, than I meant to, because I still want to do our memory verses and sing another song. But uh, you know, just in, in conclusion. The first step toward winning the battle and, and claiming our inheritance is to let God encourage us. 
and then for us to encourage others. Amen. I've, I've met people tonight, or I'm sorry, not tonight. I've met people before who, who are not encouraging people. You, you've probably met people like that before too. If anything, they're a little discouraging. Yeah. And, and that, that, that's a little bit of a spiritual thermostat. It kind of lets you know they probably haven't been with God the way they should be. When I meet someone who is an encouraging person, it lets me know they've spent some time with God. Amen. They've, they're getting encouraged by God. We see Joshua, man, Joshua, we, we looked at two weeks ago, Joshua, he got encouragement from God. Amen. Joshua chapter, Joshua chapter one, verse eight. Man, he's, he's talking about being in, in the word of God. That's what he's doing. Then what does he do? He goes and encourages the officers, Amen. the nation of Israel. But you know what it all stemmed back from? Spending time with God. Amen. If you find yourself having a hard time encouraging people, you probably need to spend more time with God. Amen. Every single one of us should be encouraging people. But hey, in order to encourage people, you have to get around some people. Amen. You gotta be around them. Mm -hmm. And then you also, you need to spend some time with God. Amen. You see that? Yeah. Chapter one, one through, one through 10, Joshua spends time with God. 11 through 15, Joshua encourages the officers. Now, what did the officers in the church, officers there in Israel then do? Well, man, they have a leader who spent time with God. That leader encouraged them. They're now encouraging the leader. You see how that works in the church? Amen. Amen. Man, it is so important that the man of God spends time with God. And that man of God should be encouraging the people. And when there's encouragement going back both ways, it's kind of like an engine, isn't it? Just, just working, right? It's working on fire. Man, you, you see spiritual growth in that. You, you, you see numerical growth in that. I mean, who doesn't want to be with people who are encouraging? <laughs> people want to be with encouraging people. Yeah. Hey, let's be encouraging. Let's be encouraging people. Amen. Let, let, let's be those type of people. Amen. Amen. I'll end with that. That's a good truth. Let's do this, Justin. Let, let's sing a song. Let, let's sing one song here. Let's go ahead and stand for this song as well. Miss Jerry, were you supposed to go? Yes, sir. Did I'm you miss good. your did you miss your bus? It's okay. I'm good, sir. Miss Jerry, we want to get you right though. We want to get you right, okay, Miss Jerry. So amen. Let's 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 sing a song. And uh, let's go to let's go to page 202. Amazing Grace, page 202. Amazing Grace. Let's sing this song right here. It's a good song. Beautiful song. You'll love this one. Page 202.